this is have been completely different uh, experience to anyone. Parents, kids themselves, teachers, doctors, even the psychiatrists. I'm sure she's going to talk to us. Uh, she knows everything about the psychiatry of, kid, of kids, but it has been uh, quite a difficult task for everyone. People to be locked down, they don't move, they study with the way they are studying now. Uh, and there's so many questions need to be answered. And people are very keen now on how can we maintain this, if you like, uh, protection period, if I call it, this isolation. We're still going to continue in this for another possibly four or five months. And what is the, the serious impact? Because now people are talking about the massive losses, not just in education, but in the mental well-being and so on. I'm going to start by asking, or maybe, or let me first uh, introduce the three distinguished is a panelist I have with me from uh, United Arab Emirates uh, from Abu Dhabi. I have uh, Dr. Amani Hassan. She's a consultant, child uh, psychiatrist. Uh, I will introduce her in detail more shortly. And then from London, is in East London, we have Remy Atobi. He's uh, a leading head teacher, primary head teacher, and she's a well experienced. And also, she sits on a reference group which advise the government uh, department of education. And also from Cairo, we have a distinguished professor, uh, Professor Dalia Kamil. She's a professor of physical therapy. She's well uh, experienced uh, on physiotherapy and she will talk to us. She has a wide experience in Africa and Middle East. And then they will help us to moderate uh, lots of questions. I think they're going to be very difficult. Uh, we have Sadiq Gizuli Mukhtar, he's a year seven student, and we have Lana Alam, she's year six. And not only their personal perspective, but they're going to share with us lots of questions from kids. And Ahmed will help us with lots of questions from the social media. So please do send your question, and I will I urge you to make it as short as possible. And if there is a possibility, you will say, this is a question for Remy or for Amani, it will help us. But otherwise, all of them, they will jump into answering it, and I'm sure we will get. Now, we're going to go to uh, is Remy Toibi, and Remy is the head teacher in Osmani Primary School in East London. She has a wealth of experience uh, with uh, primary schools. She also member of the Department of Education. For those outside the United Kingdom, the Department of Education is, is, is the Ministry of Education. It's just in the UK, we call it Department of Education. She's a member of the Department of Education primary head teacher reference group. She got a wealth of experience in teaching. She got a master's degree from uh, University of London and she got a postgraduate certificate. She got, uh, she's associate uh, CIBD with the Charter Institute of uh, Personal Development. And uh, she got a wealth of experience so dealing with it. So, Remy, I will give you the, you are, I'll give you the co-host and you can start and then we'll come back to Amani. So the floor is thank yours, you. Remy. And thank you very much for your time. So before I start, I would like to uh, say a big well done and thank you to all parents and carers and educators all over the world for all that you're doing to support the children in your care during this pandemic. To parents and carers, you're doing the best and your best is good enough. To educators, you are going above and beyond given the context you work in. Lockdown has been has posed a major challenge to all of us. Most people have found lockdown a major challenge. Some have found it okay. For some, it has been a time of self-discovery, opportunity and growth. But we're all at very different places. Please, we, you know, some of us have found it, found, you know, everything normal. Like um, some people have, are doing really well. Uh, some people find it a challenge, a struggle, especially children, not being able to go to school, not having a warm hug from their friends, not shaking hands. And sometimes we having to think about making sure we have our mask before we go anywhere. But for most children, the impact of lockdown is significant. Being indoors all day long, not being able to attend school, some children are really, really resilient, but for some children, it is a source of concern and anxiety for, you know, for them and their parents. So my aim during this session is to offer some simple and practical tips uh, to support parents and children during this period. So here we go. So practical tips to support children. First and foremost, the most important thing is having structure. Children feel more comfortable 
and learn better with a predictable routine during the day, even though it might be difficult in some situations. It's very, very tempting to want to have a lie. But please ensure that you get up and go to bed at the same time each day, have regular meal times, take regular breaks, make time to be active. Remember children, if they are in school, have regular breaks, playtime, lunchtime breaks. And that really helps to reinvigorate and energize them. Uh, the other thing that children struggle with, parents struggle with, is actually behavior management. Um, it is important that as parents, you discuss and agree expectations and the rules that govern your home, your relationship, obviously with the reasoning why you say we can, we can do this, we can't do this now, or we have to do this later. It's really, really important. Children really understand when you explain things to them. Be clear about the consequences of not following those expectations or those rules. Always try to modify behavior, catch them being good rather than tell them off all the time when they're doing what you expect them to be doing. Praise them, tell them, well done, I like the way you're sitting down. I like the way you're working so hard. Be firm and follow through as well. That is really important because sometimes children get really confused when you say something and you don't follow through. That leads to a, a conflict of emotions. They're not sure. They, they, you know, they try you, they push the boundaries. So supporting children, uh, in particular the children who are in early years, the best thing to do as a parent is to uh, let them learn. Learning through play is the most important thing. It could be real life, it could be pretend, you know, socializing, speaking, listening, taking turns, really, really important. Self-help skills like dressing up, making their own bed, uh, helping you set the table. These are really important things at this point in time. These are the sorts of things that parents should be focusing on rather than it's got to be about school, 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 school. Children learn a lot by doing everyday things, especially at that age. Gross and fine motor skills development is really, really key. Ensure they're going out, they've been active, they're climbing, they're playing with things like Lego buttons for their fine motor skills. Map making is also important. Uh, drawing, painting, just making math is really important. It, you might think it's pretend writing, but actually it's the beginning of great things. That's how children learn to write. E.g., okay, we've got to write the shopping list. It doesn't matter if it looks like squiggles to you. The children are, you know, a child's developing uh, their, 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 their map making skills. Uh, sing songs, rhymes, talk about stories, read stories together. These are the sorts of things that parents should be doing with very, very young children. Please do not worry about, they've got to sit down and focus and read. All of these things you can do through real life, play or pretend. Supporting the older children. Uh, help them with their work, sit with them, give them support and direction, but also encourage them to work independently too. Try to break down the work into short periods based on how long they can concentrate. Uh, the rule of thumb is their age plus two. So if a child is five years old, it's seven minutes maximum before they get really distracted. And that is okay. You can, you can go have a drink, have a glass of water, and then they carry on again. Do active and practical things rather than trying to make them sit and listen for long periods of time. Take frequent breaks and actually praise and reward them as well. So supporting children with special education needs and disabilities. Uh, this is really important. A lot of parents who have children with additional needs I've actually found this period really, really challenging. Uh, but one of the things you can do is create a routine for your child using visual timetables, uh, really making sure that the child knows that there is a plan, there's a structure in place. Okay, well, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're going to do next. And this is what we're going to do afterwards or tomorrow. Give them something to look forward to. Help them stay in touch with friends and families through video calls, talking about online chats to their friends, but obviously ensuring it's all done within a safe and secure environment. Uh, try, and doing, try doing things together like creative stuff, messy play, life skills such as cooking, gardening, making their bed. These are really, really key skills that a lot of the children with additional needs uh, will benefit from. Uh, help your child express their feelings uh, through social stories, the so many of them online that you can access, but these are really, really important. But don't beat yourself up as a parent. Uh, check in learning, you know, how do I know my child's learning? How do I know my child's making progress? It's all around talking. Talk about what they've learned, ask them questions using the five W, who did that, what, when, where, why, or thy, 
tell me how, why. That kind of like just gives them room to explain what they've learned to you. And when children, when we talk about the things we know, it embeds in us, we learn it a lot better. Um, devices and reducing screen time, this is, a, you know, this creates a, a lot of stress in homes and in families. Uh, digital devices are not the only way to learn. Manage screen time with a timer and break up screen time by getting uh, your child to use books and other printed materials that school has provided or that you have at home. They should write by uh, hand, trying to encourage them to write by hand. Try asking them to complete work by hand, write a diary, a summary of the things they've done each day or a to-do list. Uh, once again, be active, get away from the screen regularly and stop using digital devices at least an hour before bed. Because when I talk to a lot of people, adults, parents, we're all struggling with getting a really good night's sleep. And if you're not sleeping well, it really impacts on your mood the next day. And, you know, finally for parents, you know, it is, we acknowledge, you know, those of us in education know how challenging this time is. You are not teachers, you are not trained. Yes, you are the parents, you're the primary caregiver of your children and the primary educator as well, but you are not trained in terms of the pedagogy of teaching. So please use your support network, use online support, but prioritize rest and play for yourself and your child. And please do not beat yourself up. You are doing the best you can, you're doing at the moment. I mean, thank you very much. This is a very uh, concise and uh, you are a head teacher. So no surprise, you deliver a, a, a such precise talk. Now, Remy, uh, I will wait for you to, uh, the question I would like to ask you before we come back to the students later, uh, I know it's a difficult question and I'm, maybe as a head teacher, you may not like to be asked that question, but by the end of June, July, the time where we normally take our kids home for the end of the year, and you are in that committee or the reference committee for the ministry or the Department of Education, uh, and you are a very experienced head teacher, can you quantify, if at all possible, I know it's not possible easily, but can you quantify how much you think our kids are missing in the academic content? Imagine Lena is in year six, Sadiq is in year seven, and you have year five, four. So from year five to six or four to five, whatever it is, for you as a head teacher, uh, how much do you think they have lost in terms, or they will be losing high, likely by June, July, when they finish and go for the summer break? Okay, so this is how I see, and I think there's some research out there to say that for every one day that a child misses from school, it takes five school days to catch up. So if you then multiply the number of days we've been out of school or the children have been out of school by five, that will tell you, give you a rough idea of how much learning time they've lost. Well, obviously, we cannot generalize to say every child would have, would have lost the same amount. You know, some children have really good parental support. Uh, some schools provide live teaching. Some schools provide remote learning online. It just depends on how much. Yes, it's not the same as being in school face to face, because even as teachers, when you are working online with children, the, the, the nuances of assessment, the body language of the children, the motivation, you can't see it on a screen. So really, it's not a blanket statement about this is the amount of time they've learned. It all depends on each child's context, each child's circumstances. But as a general rule of thumb, I think there is research out there that says for every one day that a child misses from school, it takes five school days to catch up. Mm. But that's clearly uh, is quite alarming because they have lost lots of lots of days. Now, uh, before I move to Dr. Amani, I think she's back on track on us. Uh, one another question before I know this is worrying many parents. We have seen even there was parents on BBC in uh, ten or something a week ago. You you in school, my daughter is school, lots of school like Sarah and other. They are teaching online. I can see now. Lena can tell you she's studying from nine to three thirty more or usual but there are school are not teaching online and i'm sure you're aware of that so that means yeah. those kids are losing uh, a lot if they're not even having an online teaching 
when you say online teaching, I think we have to be very, very clear what you mean by that. There are different types of online teaching. There is live teaching where the teacher is actually talking to the children in the classroom. They can see all of the class. So that's live teaching. Then there is online teaching where the teachers might have uh, done a PowerPoint, pre-recorded their voice over it. A child can go back, stop it, rewind it. It's a bit like using the Oak National Academy, which the government's paid for. But I don't think there's any school, I, I doubt it, I cannot categorically say there aren't any schools, but I think the vast majority of the schools in the United Kingdom are offering one form or the other. Okay. So I wouldn't say there is a school in, because actually it's, it's a legal requirement in the United Kingdom that we provide some form of remote learning for the children. So we've got to be clear about, is it live teaching or is it remote learning? So there is a difference. So some schools, because of the context with which uh, the school works or the family context of the children in the school where you might have very, very large families where they have five, four children and they've got only one or two devices. It is additional pressure being piled on the children, being piled on the, 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 the families in terms of you've got to log on at this time. Apart, except the children each have a device to themselves, that would be very difficult. So every school has a, 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 um, a, a, um, an offer, I would say, of yes, you have an option to do this or you have an option to do that, as long as you are providing something that the children can access online. I think it's okay because actually there is a legal requirement that we provide some form of remote learning. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Remy. Very fantastic start. Love you.